Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a spring-loaded hold down. Well, the whole idea started off years ago on my old table saw as a necessity where I didn't have enough hands to hold down a larger board flat against the table saw as well as tied up against the fence. And while you're able to keep it against the side of the fence with your hands or feather boards or that sort of thing, I didn't have the downward pressure. Now you could have used a feather board, but I went one step further and made this spring-loaded hold down. Now the old fence used to have like a T-track in it that I could basically place a bolt in there and tighten it down with a wing nut and everything worked great. Well this show today came about because that piece or that spring-loaded hold down is long gone and I thought that it might be a great idea to share with you guys how to make one for your own. And it all starts off with some three quarter inch thick pine. Well the first thing that we need to do is we need to square off the one edge of the board and that will give us a good reference point for the rest of our cuts. So once we get that board squared off on the one edge, we'll do the same thing for a cross cut to square off the end of the board. Once that's done, we just want to cross cut it to a length of 12 inches. And then from there, set your rip fence to four inches wide and cut one piece, four inches in width. Now there's only one piece left to cut and that will be a strip that will be 1 16th of an inch thick and for that piece you can just cut it from one of the off cuts from when you rip the 4 inch wide piece. So now that you've done all that cutting you should have a piece of 3 quarter inch pine by 1 16th inch by 12. You should have a piece of 3 quarter inch pine should be 4 inches wide and 12 inches long. And now we're going to do a little bit of marking out on this piece. And the first thing that we want is a measurement at half an inch right here. And we just need it in two inches on each end of the board. It doesn't have to be too far in. So there you go, one mark at half inch in here and one mark at half an inch in here. And now we just want to put a mark at two inches, just like this. And you know what, I'm just gonna use a square here to carry that line forward, just like that, and just like that. And now what we want to do that we have those corners marked up, we need to start from the two inch in mark here at the corner, go right up to this half inch mark over here and draw a line. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this corner. Well, now that we got that done, I'm going to take over to the scroll saw and I'm going to cut off these corners and just cut outside to the line and then I'll head over to the disc sander and clean that up a bit. And in order to make this cut I'm just using a number seven reverse tooth PGT blade and we just want to cut outside the lines like I said. Now you could cut this on your band saw if you like. You don't have to use a scroll saw. I'm just using it because it was here and it was already set up. And now we'll head over to the disc sander. So this 1 16th inch thick piece 
This is the business end of our uh, springy hold down. And what we need to do is apply some wood glue along these surfaces that we just sanded. And we're going to place our 1 16th inch strip here and basically glue it down. And you can see how that will make this section bow and become springy here. You see that? So apply some glue and clamp it down. And now the hardest part of the project is we wait. Um, we need to wait for that glue to set up on both sides. Completely dry, I'd give it a few hours at least. So I guess I'll see you when it's done. Well, the wait is over and it's time to unclamp our spring hold down. So we'll just release these clamps. And what we want to do at this point in time is I'm gonna take this over to the table saw and I'm gonna recross cut these ends to level out where we glued up that 1 16th of an inch strip and to level out this side. It doesn't really matter the dimension here side to side now. Let's just trim this off and get this cleanly cut. Well now it's sanding time and it shouldn't take much, but we just want to sand it a little just to level out the surfaces so that if there was any kind of indiscrepancy here between our 1 16th strip and our 3 quarter board, that will level that all out and make it flush. Well now, here's the thing. This is pretty much done, and I know that it's not some crazy extravagant project, but from this point in time, I can't tell you how to finish it. Now, you may want to put a quarter inch round over all the way around, except for the spring side, but on those other three sides, just to soften the edges and make it easier to use. The reason that I can't tell you what to do with it is because I don't know what kind of setup you have in your shop. When I used to have one of these on my old saw before I got the one that I'm currently running, my fence on that saw, my rip fence, actually had um, a T-track built right into it. And for that, I was able to put 
a vertical quarter inch groove in, in this spring hold down. And that housed a T-bolt with a wing nut and a washer on the other side. So it was adjustable top and bottom and anywhere along the fence that I wanted to just by maneuvering it, tightening down a wing nut, Bob's your uncle, you were good to go. Now, this new saw that I have does not have a T-track. So for that, this will end up having to be clamped down. Still effective, it doesn't matter. So I don't know what system you have or where you're going to use it. I don't know if you're going to be using this on the router table. I don't know if you're going to be using it on the table saw. I don't know if you're going to be using it on the jointer. I have no idea where you're going to use it. I don't know if you're just going to sit there in your shop and go boing, 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 just because you like the sound it makes. I have no idea. So guys, you're going to have to figure out yourself at this point in time what the next step is and how it best suits you to um, to make it usable for your shop. But let's head over to the rip fence of the table saw and I'll show you roughly how to set this up. Well let's just say now that you want to rip this board which happens to be one of the offcuts from the stock that we made the spring hole down with. So obviously you will set your fence wherever you want it. Let's just say it's going, you know what, let's, let's do it here so that we can pass the blade without actually turning the saw on. So you lock down your fence. You know now that this is where you want it and you can place your spring hold down against the fence. Give it a little downward pressure. You don't need a lot and then apply a clamp. Now I should have brought two. So let me just run over here and grab one. Hang on, bear with me here. I was a little unprepared, but that's okay. I have a small shop. It doesn't take me long to get to the other side. And then on this side here, a little downward pressure. Now you can see, see that spring holding down? See that compressing and the way it bounces right back? So just a little bit of pressure. And now that spring hold down is holding this in place. It is holding this flat to your table. And just watch the end of this spring down or spring hold down when I take the stock out of there. And you should see it spring, there it goes. See that spring right back down into position again. It's hard to see, but let me zoom in on this because I want to show you guys the spring action of this and how it works to hold this in place. Now here we have that same piece of board set up here with that same hold down, that same setup, the exact same thing that we had. And I just want to pull the board out slowly to show you how this springs back. Just pull it out and watch, watch the spring of that, of that 1 16th piece. It still looks normal, still looks normal. And there it goes. See that spring right down there? Look at that. See the way that that just conformed to the board to hold down this piece of pine that I'm running through here? See that? Now that spring hold down holds that down tight to the table. You don't need a lot of pressure here, but it gives you just enough for that extra little helping hand. So there you go. A wooden spring hold down. And there you have it. A wooden spring hold down. Guys, this is not a complicated project by any means. And it sure as heck isn't fine woodworking and it's not some kind of magic trick that uh, you wouldn't have been able to figure out on your own. What it is, is a real simple way to use simple materials in order to assist you in holding down a piece of board. Now this particular little jig or the spring hold down doesn't work in every scenario. It can't work unless the board is wide enough to accommodate both the hold down and either your push block or your push stick or what have you. If it's a thin strip sort of thing, this hold down is only going to get in your way. So don't think that you can use it for thin strips. That's not its purpose. But if you're having problems holding stock down, whether it be stock down at the outfeed table, say of a router table, this is where this comes in handy. If you're trying to feed stuff through a router table using a feather board to hold it up against the fence, but you're having problems holding it down to the table, that's where this guy comes in. Again, 
it has a purpose somewhere in the shop. Now, I'm sorry that it's not a complete build as far as attaching it to your table saw and that sort of thing, but I don't know what you've got and I don't know what setup you are going to be using this for, what tool you're going to be using for, or how that tool is set up. <clears throat> so, you need to figure that out and that's that's all the fun of woodworking, guys, is figuring out the problems, figuring out how to make it work for you. Not for the other guy, but for you. Guys, this is a fun project. You can whip it up in a few hours if all you need is that spring hold down. And you know what? They're pretty much disposable. With cheaper wood like pine, where I made it with for this build, I mean, if it gets wrecked up in six months, I think it was all of about 35 cents worth of pine. Try getting a spring hold down from one of your big box stores or the woodworking supplier for that kind of money. It isn't going to happen. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this show. I hope you're going to try it for yourself. Play with those dimensions. See if you can get more spring, less spring. See if you can make it smaller, bigger, whatever you want. These measurements are not etched in stone twist them, play with them, and make them your own, guys. And I hope that you're going to try that out. I also hope you're going to join me again next week for yet another woodworking video.